knitters and crocheters and I will walk them to this cozy little spot in the woods that I have selected for us. I am so grateful that you decided to give my video a chance today and I hope that it is something that you enjoy. My name is Kim and I am a die-hard yarn lover, knitter, crocheter, and have been for many years if you're new to my channel. If you're returning, thank you so much for coming back and seeing what I'm rambling about today. Today's video though is going to be focused on the craft cart and I think the craft cart is a large component in many of our lives because we all like to have all the crafty things with us at all times to assist us in our process of making the things that we like to create. Before we get started, I'm going to talk about what I'm wearing. So I've spoken about this poncho in other videos, and this is it. This is the infamous camouflage um, poncho. I think this one was called Easy Folded Poncho from Church Mouse House Tea Yarns. If I'm not right, regardless if I'm right or wrong, I'll put it at the bottom. But this is something this is that I made when I first started. So this thing is about, well, 11 years, 10 years, I don't know. I made it in 2013, 2014. It is made out of some natural something DK. I love the drape on it. Like it's got a really great drape. It's, it's really comfortable, especially on days like today when it's supposed to be 85, but right now it's only 65 degrees. So it's a little cool, but it is it's not even seven o'clock yet. I had to give it 530 and the sun is starting to come up and I just really wanted to be out here and share the sunrise with you all. So here we are. I do love this thing. I do wish I chose a better yarn. At the time though, I was new to knitting and new to crochet really. I'd, I'd only been doing both for about a year for crochet and probably about six months for knitting and I did not understand yarn choices and I did not realize that this was going to come out looking like something camouflage so I mean I blend in quite well with background but it was a, it was a really pleasurable knit and it's something that I will be knitting again because I do wear this thing a lot because it's comfortable it's cozy for mornings like today um, back to this topic of this video though. So I was tagged by another content creator and I think these are kind of interesting and fun to see how other people utilize something so differently. And the topic of her video was the craft card. And I have three craft cards and she made her video talked about her car and i'll link it down below so you can see that video and she poses these four questions and so we're going to talk about them as i sit here and enjoy the sunrise with you guys which the sun will be rising over my shoulder so you should be able to see it peeking through the trees more and more as this video progresses so the first question she asked is what did i like and not like about my craft cart well again i had three the first one was the OG one that was going around, the Robin Eggs Blue. At that time, you couldn't find them really in a lot of places. The only place you could really find it was, I think, Ikea maybe. It's been like 10 years. I can't remember. But I do remember that Michael's Hobby Lobby and none of those places had them yet. And I had to get mine from Sam's. For whatever reason, Sam's had got them in and I rushed to Sam's to grab one and I think I grabbed one of four. There was only like four there. And it was around 40 bucks. And I used that thing so much that the wheels literally fell off the cart. I had that thing full of projects and I had like notebooks in there for knitting and crochet and I had all my hooks and I had all my notions and I pushed that thing around the porch all around the house 
then at some point it became more for my planner stuff and Bible journaling as well as regular paper crafts and when I would go outside on the back porch and do my morning um, sometimes devotionals and just sometimes some Bible journaling I would wheel it out there also and yeah the wheels literally fell off <laughs> so I upgraded to one from Amazon and it was just like it but it was in gray and this one had this really cool side panel that was like a um, metal that was magnetic and it had these baskets so I had now had baskets to put like pencils and my crochet hooks and you know notions in and I used it kind of but then I started realizing that it wasn't very practical for me so that cart became a mixture of another paper goods cart that would sit in the laundry room when not in use and I would wheel it out to the kitchen when we did homeschool and when I would just have my morning time with my planners planning for the homeschool day. Pretty much everything we do revolves around homeschool. So then I saw that there was these kind of carts on Amazon and this is like a rolling bookcase and I was like okay this is cool so we ordered one of those and we used it for a long time for homeschool and now it sits in the storage room because the kids have gotten older and the books have gotten thicker and not as many so we have this big IKEA bookcase that now holds all of our homeschool stuff each year but the carts are not forgotten. They are going to be going out to the yarn studio once I get that completed and I'll be using them in various parts of that crafting space. I don't really know what for yet. I'm thinking the little metal bookcase is going to hold a printer if I can get a printer out there. I have an extra printer somewhere. I just have to find the power cord. Which leads me to what do I use now? Because obviously I use something and I am a basket girl and I have been for many many years now and the reason I am a basket girl is again I love to move around I do not like to be stationary and I felt like my crafting cart was causing me to be stationary it was limiting me in my crafting adventures and that's not something that I wanted to do. So I went to baskets and I am kind of like a nomad when it comes to my baskets. I move in and out of baskets all the time. I don't have a favorite basket but I have a bunch of favorite ones types. So I really like these from African market baskets and these are handmade by women and it gives them fair wages and I think it's a really good company and calls. So I will link that down below. And I love these baskets. They come in a variety of colors and a variety of sizes. What first got me hooked on them was my local yarn store started carrying them, Yeevees, before she went out of business. And if you're new to my channel, I just posted a, an update on my community tab, um, calling attention to a video that I made about that store. I really miss that store. That store was more family and friendships than just yarn to me. But that's where I learned about these baskets. She started carrying them, so I started buying them. And then over the years, if I ever see one, especially like in a antique shop, occasionally I will run across them and I seriously buy them immediately. Like I don't even, it's not even a thought that I have to ponder. I'm just like, okay, it's coming home with me. So I've gotten a bunch of them. I need to grab them all one day and take a like family photo of them, but they're being used randomly throughout our house for different things. But I do like to use them to carry all my stuff around in, and I like to use them for larger projects. So I have two of them right now that are being used for future blanket yarn, and it's holding all the yarn for the blanket, and it will be the, the basket or project bag that I work out of when I work on those blankets. 
So that is those. I also love these metal baskets. And that is what I'm using right now is this metal one from Amazon. It's a metal mesh. It has these two handles. These are very reminiscent of smaller version that Ikea has. And that is kind of what I originally got started on because I do go to Ikea in Atlanta a lot and I had got a couple of the smaller ones and I really like to use those for smaller projects as well. But then I saw that Amazon and Sam's had these bigger ones. Now these bigger ones came in a pack of two actually, the ones that I have from Sam's for only $24 and the single ones on Amazon were like 40 bucks. So it was a much better deal to get it at Sam's. And so that is my cart. And then she talks about where do I use my cart? Well, that's why I went to a basket because I am not a stationary crafter. I'm not gonna stay in the house if I don't have to stay in the house. Granted, you know, pollen is really bad here and I hate pollen and pollen hates me, but I still love to be outside. This is, this is what inspires me nature and the sound of the crickets and the sound of the birds and the wind rustling through the leaves so this is where i'm going to spend as much time as i possibly can and i love the solitude of being out in the woods just sitting and knitting i mean it's so peaceful occasionally i'll see my turkey sometimes i'll see a deer it just depends on what part of the day it is there's always squirrel and now that I have my little Canadian geese running around everywhere, occasionally I see them. So I like the ability to travel with baskets. Also as a homeschool family, there's many times that we will wake up in the morning and decide to go to school at the park. And so the ability to just pick it up and take whatever I need and not have to scurry and grab things is the ultimate ideal process i guess you could say i don't know i'm losing my words here so that is what i went baskets what is in my basket is the next question and then she asked how to use utilize your basket so we're going to kind of do three and four together because i think they kind of work together so what's in my basket is i always have at least two projects that i'm actively working on I do have like 18 whips and I have over 500 things in my queue on Ravelry that I want to make and that I plan on making at some point or another. But typically two is what I have constantly with me. So I always try to have a knitting project and a crochet project because I like both crafts equally. I know that there are some channels who are strictly all about the knitting and there's channels who are strictly all about the crochet but i do both and i enjoy both and so this channel is about both and there we go so for this knitting project in the bag currently is this what i'm working on and this is my close to you shawl this is a free pattern and this shawl has some special meaning to me because it is yarn that I got from a friend who passed away a couple years ago and she was just a little bit older than me same age kids as me and it was one of the most hardest things I think I've dealt with in a while as an adult is losing someone and I didn't even really get to speak to her that often But I think it was a real eye opener of how life is so fleeting and it's gone in the blink of an eye. And as we age, you know, it's we're literally just living on borrowed time. We never know when our time's gonna be over. And it was it was a lot to take in for me. But we did chat through Messenger and I got to meet up with her a couple of times. She came to our local knit night one night and I got some yarn from her because she needed to make some money. So she destashed a bunch of yarn and I bought a bunch of yarn to help support her. 
and I'm so grateful that I did that because now when I use that yarn like this, I can just sit here and reflect on her and our conversations and her children and think about her children and just send out some positive love prayers and vibes to them and to her and her family. So it, it was just, um, it was interesting. And the whole story is on my Ravelry page, if you want to read about it. As far as my crochet project, I'm going to set that down. Oh, and the yarn I'm using is Miss Babs Yalza, and this is in the Birthday Jubilee. The project that I'm working on is in this bag, and this is something that I sewed up. I used to make some project bags and sell them at my local yarn store. I like flat bottoms, I like drawstrings, and this is like my happy small bag. And then I have a little bit bigger one that I make for larger things. But in here I have stuffing, and I literally just put everything I need for each project in the bag. So this one has even a pair of scissors with a darning needle, some stitch markers, the yarn, the crochet hook, and down there in a little thing is the string for the eyes. Although I may stick some safety eyes in here for him. I don't know yet. And his pattern. So I will be making him and he is from Toth Designs. He's super adorable, but he's part of my mini bulb kit of theirs that I'm creating. So now let's talk about what's the rest of my basket. So as you can see, it's pretty full and I'm not gonna lie, I tend to be an overpacker. You can ask my husband. I have way more notions in here even than I could possibly need. So, your basket didn't have to be this big in all reality. There is always my notebook. And now this is not my planner. I am a happy planner system user. So I do use the happy planner and I use their notebooks because I can take the paper out and fit them in each other without any issues. It's just an effortless process so I love them and I've been a happy planner lover for over well eight years nine years I don't know it's been a while it's been a while and in here I have my notes for the show there's actually a furls page where I keep up with all my furls hooks because I'm trying to collect an odyssey and a streamline in every possible size. The streamline currently doesn't go down below a G4 millimeter right now, unless it's a metal. I think they're trying to work on lower metals. Furls, if you're watching, give us a metal streamline and like a B, C, and D, please. Thank you. Then there's just a goals page because I like to set goals for myself. As far as crafting, I like to have deadlines, personal deadlines, regular deadlines, as far as trying to get a test done, stress me out. And that's why I don't do any commission work. I like to do tests just for fun of helping out other designers, but I don't do commission because I can't handle it with everything going on in my life. And I think that's important to know your limits and know what you can handle and learn to say no. Like it's really hard to learn to say no, but it's so vital, important for your mental health just to learn to say no. There is a YouTube section. So all you peeps on these streets, I have your channel wrote down that as I've come across you and your actual name, because if not, I'll forget it. Cause I'm horrible with names. And again, all the thing in my life. And then I have a section where I put like quotes that inspire me. I think having that to turn to when I need that inspiration is really beneficial and I love having it. So then there's this brain dump section and I'm going to show you all of it because it's basically my brain on paper. So I will sit here and I will doodle sometimes and if I'm thinking about something for content of this channel I will jot it down and if I make it then it gets a little cute check mark beside it and if I don't make it then it's just there and maybe I'll make it another day. I really want this channel to be a place where 
there is content that is enjoyable but hopefully inspiring to you all and I want to be educational so I want to make sure that I'm putting out information that is factorial as far as terminology and processes and with obviously opinion based because it's my opinion it's it's my view on this whole knitting and crochet journey and I just wanted to have a place to share my passion with you who is sitting here watching my videos you know and I feel like if I've done that then I've done this channel a service of what I want it to be and when I fail to do that then I'm doing it a disservice and I'm doing a disservice to me in neglecting what I set out to do if that makes any sense it's a lot of wordage and I apologize that's just me so yeah there's that and then there is this section where each month I actually write down the videos that I did that much just to keep up with them because I'm all about list I I really enjoy my list and it's just something that I've dealt with all my life because I do have some OCD tendencies and you know people joke about those things but it's it's a lot when you have those um, it's a lot on your mental state and on your body physically on your body I have this thing where washing my hands and I wash my hands so often that I have developed atopic dermatitis so that's why you often see these spots on my hands is because I've washed them so much that the skin literally starts drying out to the extent where it starts cracking and and I don't even have severe OCD so I cannot even imagine you know dealing with all that on a daily basis mine has gotten better over the years through a lot of meditation but I would used to um, stay fixed on it aided on things so much where I would wake up in the middle of the night and I'd have to go Clorox baseboards at like 3 in the morning like I cannot go back to sleep until the baseboards were Clorox and then I would have all that chemical smell and it was just but I just felt like it was so dirty and it's it's been an interesting journey. So if you know if you deal with things like that, you're not alone here. I I, I joke that, you know, I'm I'm very, very organized, but I'm very, very organized because I enjoy it. I like knowing where things are, but also because I can't process without it. So I think that's why I enjoy the basket because even though it looks kind of chaotic, there's it's, it's organized stuff in there and I know where everything is. And when I lose something, it freaks me out. And that's also why I don't keep a lot of stuff in my basket and I don't have my cart anymore because there's so much stuff that was just right there in front of me all the time that it was like stimulation overload and it caused me anxiety and your crafts should not cause you anxiety. Don't let your craft cause you anxiety. And the next section is ideas for patterns that I hope to be writing up. I do have several that I would like to start on this fall, but honestly, I, I'm so fixated on getting my studio done that it's really hard to focus on the other stuff right now. And I'm hoping that once I get out there and I get everything in its spot, that I can focus on the other aspects of the craft that I like to do which is hopefully get these designs out. I would like to earn a little bit of income from this to help pay for the stuff for the shed, just saying. So then I have my actual sections for knitting, crochet, cross stitch, and even sewing because of the other yarn related fiber um, textile crafts that I enjoy. So for crochet and the knitting, really what I do is I use it as like a a journal so this is where I did this blanket and it had a hundred and seven colors I think which is kind of crazy but I actually snipped all the yarns and I put the colors down with the color code and in the order that I was doing the blanket in and so I had a visual 
representation of how it's going to look as I was making it. And then I noted the day that I started it and the date that I finished it. And then I do that with all kind of crafts. So like this is where I just literally cut off photocopied a pattern and put pieces of it in here. And this is my current temperature snake that I'm making. And that's in here. And then for the knitting, I do the same thing. So this is Smoke and Mirrors cowl that I did with Malabrigo a while back. When I did my Stephen Westshaw last year, no, not was it last year? Yeah. I actually used this method to fix, figure out my colors. So I got color pencils and I kind of jotted down how it was gonna look so I could see. And I was able to bring in extra colors because I could kind of see how they were gonna work together before the whole end of that. That was a very, very fun and educational knit. Um, I highly suggest if you wanted to learn to do that. It's a lot of knitting. It's a lot of techniques to learn, but it was so much fun. And then if you get really bright, fun colors like I did, like it's just, it was great. It really was a mood booster for me. Even projects that haven't started yet, I will go ahead and kind of post here, post jot down information and this is kind of like my version of my knitting and crochet journals so when i first started way back in the day i actually had knitting and crochet journals and i talk about them and show them in one of my um, think ember episodes and that was a series i like to do around thanksgiving where every thursday i post a video with thankfulness kind of vibe going on to it and I'll link that video down below but actually show the journals that I started and I'd always used Ravelry and I still use Ravelry mostly for, well for all my notes but any of my private um, jotting down I just do in here then we go like I said into sewing and the cross stitch and that is my notebook there's two books in here I talked about this on a recent video this is Southwest Crochet it was such a really pretty book and then I got this recently Lisa's crochet actually has a friends of a feather along going right now and you're supposed to make a bird that represents your area or something about you and I was gonna make a turkey because on this 30 I think we have 35 acres or is it 38 acres it's either 35 or 38 acres we have about 30 turkeys that roam the land and i'm kind of surprised i haven't seen them this morning usually they're in that bottom field but we also have a family of canadian geese that are here with us they just had their babies about a month ago and they're so much fun to watch and i thought about making a geese but the turkeys just are a representation of me they're so funny and quirky and they will literally come to the back kitchen window and there's like an, a bank and they'll sit up on the bank and they'll look in the kitchen window and just yell at us for no reason. It's so funny. And this is the people talked UK. And so they have this turkey pattern in here and Turkey's name is Ross. And I grew up watching Friends for many, many years and Ra uh, not Rachel, um, what's her face? Oh my goodness. Can I think of her name? Courtney Cox, whatever character. I can't think of her character's name, but she's actually from Alabama. And so I was like, okay, this, this turkey's name is Ross and this is a friends of a feather cow. And I like the show friends. So it was just like a project meant to be. However, this thing is supposed to be turned in by the 15th. And I haven't started yet, but he seems pretty, Easy. I might start on him today and try to knock him out this week, but I'm pretty excited about that. But there's also some other birds in here that I want to make. So there is another pattern in here. This is from the Knit 365 blog, and I'll tag these people down below. He's doing a beanie along, and you can download the free basic rib hat from his coffee site. 
and it's just to make some hats for donation and you can read all about that on his his channel there is a card that a member had sent me there's this card and this is from the maker of the mustache for this guy that I made and I was just gonna hope Hole punch, hole punch. I was gonna hole punch this and this card from Knitting Fever that had all their socials and put them in my planner slash notebook. But going back to where I said I had been packing up stuff to move out to the studio, I packed up my Happy Planner hole punch and I'm not sure which box it's in. So until I get that stuff out there, and I don't even have drywall up, so it's gonna be a minute. <laughs> I can't hole punch anything. I have my iPad. So a lot of the patterns that I buy off Ravelry, I don't even print them off. I just download them to the Knit Companion app. And I've done the free version and I've done the paid for version. I did the paid for version for a few years. And I found that even using charts and stuff, I did not use all the features because it's just not the way that I craft. There was no point for me paying for all that. So I just do the free version and that's plenty for what I need it for, even for doing tests and stuff. Because all I need is the bar to move on the actual graph. I have some Notion pouches. I'm not going to go over all of these of what's in them because it's pretty much the same thing. This is Chicken Boots. This one is no longer made because the company closed down a couple years ago and it was really sad for me because I love their products. I have one of their cross stitch bags and I have several of these Notion pouch. They're thin. They have this thick vinyl front on them that's see-through. They have great zippers and they always have great prints and they always did the cutest Harry Potter prints. It's just sad to see them no longer, I think. But in here I have, I do want to show these. Things. I always carry waist yarn in every one of my Notion pouches. I always carry my favorite jump ring stitch markers because this is all I use for knitting. And then I always have some sort of progress keeper, which is just a stitch marker with a lobster claw on it. And there's this little elephant one but I use those to mark where I am. I always keep some kind of crochet hook, or not hook, crochet stitch marker. So I'll occasionally use these little slide on, but most time I use the little safety pin looking ones, the plastic ones. Those are my favorite crochet stitch markers. These two are by Jimmy Beans. So this one is when Jimmy Beans bought out Namaste and I really enjoyed the Namaste products. I had a lot of their stuff. They were based out of California, I think. And originally I got some of that stuff in my first stitches show, which is also no longer a thing as of like this month. But I loved this version the best. And this is the newer version with Jimmy Beans and Deli Q. And I like them as well, but they have magnetic backs to them. So I got like these little tins. Like this one is an old sewing tin and it has a bunch of those little round stitch markers in it and it sticks. My little scissors stick in here. There's always a waist yarn. As, as a knitter, you should always have waist yarn. Darning needles. This one has a little crochet hook and a tape measure and as always, chapstick. So I like that these hold all that, but it, they are thicker and they do take up space. So the new version is this thin thing, which has a zipper. I do like that they're lightweight because I can just stick them easily in my purse and I don't have to have a lot of space taken up. I'm not a huge, huge purse person sometimes. Sometimes I am. It just depends on what kind of project I have with me because I'm always carrying a project. But these are also magnetic, so I have a Love and Lavish A lotion bar in here. And this is the Eucalyptus Mint. No, Lavender Mint. It's delicious. These come with a darning needle that sticks to it. And it comes with these two Lotus stitch markers. This is just an extra stitch marker I threw in here. But the cool thing about these is that it has this built-in thing right here. 
And this is a yarn cutter. And basically it's just a dental floss cutter thing. But you don't have to worry about having your snips taken away if you travel. But I like it because it's just, it's super thin. It's thinner than my wallet actually. And I can just always have the stuff I need. There's my glasses that I'm supposed to wear whenever I am looking at a computer or reading. It's supposed to wear the main part of that sentence. And they're actually prescription glasses and I probably need to go get a new prescription because it's been a hot minute and I'm sure I've gotten blinder over the years because I'll be 43 this year. My AirPod case, an eraser, which works with a pencil for my notebook. There's also a pen, a pencil. There's two pens and a pencil in here because it never fails. One of them is going to die on me. My friend Deborah gave me this eraser and it has the alpaca on it. I love it. It works great. There's chapstick. If you've followed my channel for a while, you know that I am a huge chapstick person. And there's actually four chapsticks in here. Because you can never just have one. There is this thing. This thing is stitch markers. These are the ones that I showed earlier. The little um, safety pin plastic ones that I love for crochet. And I love these little glass jars. I've talked about these during Vlogmas. But we get the Bonnie Mam advent calendars every year. We have for like three, four years. And they the little jellies come in these little glass jars and I wash the ja glass jars and I reuse them. They're great for small storage, especially for stitch markers and they're adorable because it's a little bitty mason jar with the plaid top. So cute. This thing I've just had for years to just have a random assortment of stitch markers, all kinds in here. I really have a lot of pretty clay made ones and I have a lot of sets that I've made and they are in this little box thing. I'm thinking when I move out to the shed, I may actually knit or crochet something to display all of my clay ones because I've gotten a bunch of them. I typically buy from Simply Serving. I love Lindsay's shop. She makes the most adorable stitch markers and I will link her Etsy shop. I always have lotion, which goes back to the constantly washing of my hands because they dry out. This stuff is really delicious to me. This is some older Bath and Body Works, which is almost about empty, which is why I got this new thing, which is eucalyptus mint. And I love this lotion. And as you can see, there's coffee stains on it because this is real life confessions of the crafting basket and coffee is everywhere. <laughs> there's scrap paper. Here's a swatch that I was making. I'm toying with, and it's coming undone. I need a, a stitch marker. I'm toying with the idea of making like a log cabin style blanket and I was just kind of figuring out my own interpretation and um, patterning for that. Playing with yarn and just kind of seeing how these colors play together. There's another lotion. There's hand sanitizer because again we take and go to the park a lot, so I'll take hand sanitizer. There is a case for my mic. Some more scissors. These are super cute. These are from Team U, and they are kind of mermaidish to me because they go pink in like this teal color. There is a random ball of yarn. And this is some yarn I got off of D Stash, and I paid two dollars for this ball of fingering weight yarn. I'm pretty sure it is a superwash. If anybody knows what colorway this is, so I can figure out maybe the dyer, so I can link it in project notes, I would appreciate it. It's super pretty. There's a random sucker. This is the last one I have of these, and they're like strawberry cream. They came with this really cute Hello Kitty cup, and they're so good. And I'm like, saving it for one day when I just really need something sweet and special. Cough drops. Because <laughs> I live in Alabama and my body hates pollen. 
another little notebook. And this is just in here so I can cut stitch marker off of it from my Miss Babs order that I recorded a while back and I haven't done it yet. A Ikea phone stand that I occasionally use. And for whatever reason, at the bottom is a random polished rock. I don't even know where this came from or how this got in here. I may never know, who knows. But yeah, and that's my basket. And that's how I utilize my basket. So, thanks so much for watching and spending time with me out here in the woods this morning. If you enjoyed this video, then YouTube should put one right here that it thinks that you will enjoy also. I hope you all have a great week and happy crafting.